today I'm going to be discussing does protective styling damage your hair? Now I've done a poll on Instagram and the majority agree no but I'm going to be discussing the pros and cons for protective styling. These are the factors I've noticed of protective styling. These are my personal experiences with myself and my children. Protective styling, let me just say guys, it's obviously a personal choice for everybody. People have reasons why they do their protective styling. I mean, my one is for growth, but with my children, it cuts down times of getting ready in the morning. You know, just less hassle, because my son, as you've most probably seen, has very, very thick hair, and my daughter's hair is catching up. So that just cuts out the time. If I can do their hair in a protective style on the weekend, I don't have to worry about it in the school week. So those are my reasons for protective styling. Okay guys, but protective styling doesn't just start with the style, obviously you've got to prep your hair before protective styling and that all adds into the overall protective style. So I'm going to start from the beginning, let's say detangling. However you start to protective style your hair, I usually do mine from wet hair, so after my hair's washed. Some people may blow dry their hair, but this was actually wet hair and it's still a bit damp actually, so I've just allowed it to dry. From wet hair, you're gonna to wanna to detangle your hair before you put it in a protective style. Now, detangling. <sighs> there are so many ways to detangle, and I always say, guys, I'm giving you my advice. I always get questions on how do you do this, or how do you do that, or why do you do this? I do it for my own personal specific reasons. Okay, so detangling, there's lots of things to say that if you're a natural, you should finger detangle and not use a comb. I use a comb. I don't like the way the hair feels in my fingers. I don't feel that it's fully detangled in my fingers. If I was to do a wash and go, then maybe I might finger detangle, but I still have to end up going back to the comb. With my kids hair, they need a comb. Their hair is just always tangled. So I detangle their wet hair from root to tip. Now it also depends on the type of combs. I don't use fine tooth combs. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it has been done. Not by me. I've had it done to myself in a hairdresser's actually, detangling my 4A hair, and it was just not the one. I find the best way to detangle hair is with a wide tooth comb. Regardless guys, you're manipulating your hair, you're gonna get some type of breakage, I do believe personally. I don't think you can detangle without any hair coming out whatsoever, but it minimizes the breakage or minimizes I wouldn't say so much shedding because shedding is meant to come out, but it minimizes the breakage. So I think the tool that you use, i.e. the comb, i.e. a wide tooth comb, definitely helps. Still talking about detangling, is the way the hair is detangled. So I've seen people just go in and just comb their hair like that. For me, that is a no-no. And as I said, for me, that is a no-no. Not for anybody else, you can do what you want, but for me personally, it's a no-no. When wet, my hair has a lot of elasticity. So if I was to do that, it would stretch the strand and eventually snap the strand. So I like to hold onto my hair, comb it from the roots. Bruh. Comb it from the tips up into the roots. Okay, I don't like to comb from the roots all the way down. I don't like to just have my hair freely flowing while I'm combing it because that will rip out my hair. Also with detangling as well guys, do you do it with dry hair or wet hair? I detest detangling my hair whilst it's dry. I can hear the crunch, <laughs> I can feel my hair snapping, it just, mm -mm, not for me. With water in my hair, it gives it more um, flexibility, it's less rigid obviously, and it's easier for me to comb, simples. Before we get onto the actual styling of the hair, I'm gonna be talking about moisturizing. So there's different ways to moisturize your hair if you're prepping it for a protective style. Personally for me, the way I moisturize my hair to do this style is obviously I shampooed and deep conditioned and then I used a leave-in conditioner. I didn't seal it with any oil. I was going to, but if I was to wear my hair in a wash and go, then I would most probably add some oil, but what I'll most probably do now is whilst my hair is in this style, I'll most probably just oil my scalp and that's it. But for moisturising, again I'm going to use my kids as an example. My son, as I said, has really really thick hair, so what I do use in his hair is literally water and hair grease. Hair grease guys, hair grease. But because my daughter's hair is slightly different, I use a leave-in conditioner in hers. Now this leads me on to the actual styling. Okay, so I'm not really gonna talk about my protective styling because I haven't noticed any adverse effects in regards to styling my own hair. But when it comes to my kids, with my son, 
because his hair is so thick and full i tend to leave it in the cornrows for up to two to three weeks at a time but i will say this because it's been in the style for that amount of time even once his hair has been washed the parting still remain. It's not in a sense that the protective style has damaged his hair, but it has actually made his hair grow in that type of style, if that makes sense. So even if I washed his hair, shampooed, whatever, the partings are still there. And that's showing me that I have to then change the style because it's putting more stress onto those particular areas where his hair is parted. So for instance, if his hair is parted down the middle like this and he has it in two braids and I left it like that for three weeks, if I've washed his hair and combed it out, this parting will still remain. Because it's been manipulated in that position for so long, I can see it's, it's not thinning, but the scalp is more visible, <laughs> if that makes sense, guys. What I do try to do is change it up from time to time. So if he's got a part in there, the next hairstyle, it will be a side part and what have you. <laughs> it can then start to cause traction alopecia, and obviously I will lead on to that in a second. Right, okay, so I'm leading on to it now. <laughs> right, so what I've noticed with my daughter's hair, she hasn't got traction alopecia, but I think she had had signs of impending. It was, it was starting to appear because of the styles I used to do. So when I do cornrows in her hair for protective styling, I notice if I'm doing cornrows from the front of her hair, or even the back or around the edges of her neck and what have you, she will get small little bumps. Now these bumps obviously show that her hair is being pulled. Her hair is very, very fine. I can't leave her hair out because it will tangle. So her hair has to be in a protective style. So what I've done is I've switched it up and I've put her hair in a protective style, something like this. Okay, and this seems to work better for her. So protective styles, I'd say for my daughter, are harmful if they are in a cornrow style. If her hair is headbands and twists, then her hair is fine. She doesn't get any of those spots. She doesn't get any um, thinning of the edges. But yes, in this case, cornrows are harmful to her hair. And last thing guys, this one um, I'd say is more so for myself, my kids don't get it, it's more so for me. If I have my hair in a protective style for more than a week, even if my hair's in a wash and go for more than a week and I haven't washed it, my scalp itches like crazy. But if it's in a protective style, I am constantly itching that same spot, okay? Whereas it's not in a wash and go, it's not free to move. So if I'm constantly itching my head in the same spot, eventually, obviously, I'm gonna do damage to the follicles and I suppose cause thinning. So that is another thing why I think protective styling can be protective styling can be harmful to your hair. This is this is my conclusion now, guys, because <laughs> I am coming to an end. So I do feel that um, there is more than one factor in regards to protective styling if it can damage or be good to the hair, benefit the hair. Um, I.e., obviously detangling, moisturizing the style that it's actually in. So overall, I do think protective styling isn't harmful to the hair if it's done in a certain way and if the hair is cared for correctly prior to protective styling, i.e. as I said, moisturizing. But overall, I don't feel that it is um, necessarily harmful. I don't necessarily feel it does break the hair. But again, as I said, guys, it's my personal preference. Everybody's hair is different. I mean, if you if you manipulate your hair a lot and your hair tends to break off even just touching it, I suppose, then, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Everybody's hair is different. But for me personally and my kids, protective styling has helped immensely. Again, I'm pro wash and goes because that has helped my hair grow immensely also. But again, this is about protective styling and I do feel that protective styling, yes, is not harmful. Okay, I will be doing some more polls on uh, Instagram, guys. I find it very informative that when I ask questions and you give me your results, I like that because I didn't, I didn't um, anticipate the mixed reviews of people saying, yes, it's harmful to your hair or no, it's not harmful. I was, I don't know, I suppose I automatically assume that everyone's saying no, it's not harmful to your hair, but I find it interesting that some people do find it harmful. I would like to know, for you watching, your comments down below, if you do find it harmful, protective style and harmful to your hair, please let me know why. I would like, I'm quite interested, I'd like to know as to why you find protective styling harmful to your hair. 
But anyway, guys, that is it for now. Um, if you do want to uh, take part in my poll on Instagram, my questions, you can follow me at Miss Lauren Lee 11 and Facebook, Twitter, and obviously Instagram, <laughs> the same name. I am on Snapchat, guys. I don't use it a lot, but uh, if you add me, I will add you and I will start to progressively start using it a bit more. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I hope this was informative to you and I will see you in the next one. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye.